Okay guys, so we're here with Vivian and she asked me to talk about uh, back escapes. So she was in Bali and she got choked out a lot and so she doesn't want to get choked anymore. <laughs> but I told her it's definitely going to happen, especially if she's so junior. But I said, right, same thing. It just means that people are more experienced than you, right? If you have a chess master who's played chess for 20 years, and you have someone who played chess the first time, who's gonna win? Of course, the chess master's gonna win, right? So it's the same thing. You just have to keep learning and keep improving every day. So first, we'll talk about the basics, and then we'll talk about the escapes. So first, I'm on Vivian's back here. And uh, with my arms, I have two different positions. I have over her shoulder and I have under her shoulder, right? When my arm is over her shoulder, here it's dangerous to her because I can choke her. But it's not very good for controlling her. However, when my arm is underneath, it's not dangerous to her. I can't choke her, but it's very good for controlling her shoulders, right? So the three positions are like this. Most common you're gonna see is a seat belt, which is one control arm and one attack arm. Also, we talked about, I don't just want to use my arms and squeeze and hold like this. Actually, what I want to do is I want to control her shoulder line. So I use my elbow on this side to control her shoulder, and then I use my hands on this side to control this shoulder. Now when she goes to move, she, she tries to turn towards me, I'm stuck with her like a magnet. Yes, it's very difficult here. If my hands were like this, and I just think about squeezing her, now she turns towards me, turn towards me, turn, turn, turn. You see, she can make some disconnection much more easily. Good. So seat belt, two attacking arms, which is useful when you have very good control, but they're defending very strong. So she pulls my arm away, she pulls my arm away, she pulls my arm away, and then I come to this one, she pulls it away, and I come to this one, so it's very, difficult for her. And then the last one is I can use two hands to control her. So either like this or two hands together like this. And now I can't attack her, but I can control her very well. Good. So now let's talk about the legs. With the legs, we have three basic positions as well. First is with my feet in the center like this, which we call hooks, right? The second position is uh, a hip wedge where I step my foot on her hip. And usually when I do that, I want to turn down to the underhook side. So I'll step my foot onto her hip, and I get underneath. What ideally I want is I want to be able to see my foot across on this side. If I'm too much behind Vivian, like this, you see now here I can't see my feet anymore. I'm too much behind her. So what I want to do, what I want to do is I want to get here. So I'm under her, I'm not behind her, I'm under her, right? So this is one idea. So this is my feet on her, uh, this is the, the, the hip wedge, where I step on my foot, or I step on her hip, both they're fine, I step on my foot, or I step on her hip. And then the last one is the body triangle. And for the body triangle, what I wanna do is I'm gonna push her down with this foot, and this leg, my left leg, is gonna push in deeper. Now I'm going to take my heel and bring it back, and then I use my knee to wedge in. I open, and it's extremely tight. So one more time. Of course, if I'm tall and they're very skinny, I can just go like this, right? But it's not nearly as tight as when I go one, two, three. So I'm going to tell you it's much, much, much tougher. Okay, now I'm going to back. So Vivian's on my back here. She takes seat belt, whatever direction, doesn't matter. So what we looked at today is we looked at escaping to the choking arm side. So from here, we have two main situations that we want to escape. The first is when we escape on the control side, right? So here, Vivian's underneath me a bit more, right? Good. She's underneath me a bit more. Her head is close to my head. She's probably like this, right? And she has a lot of strong and dangerous attacks from here. So typically, I don't really like to, to escape on this side. Typically, I like to escape on the other side. So sit back up. So now, my whole idea 
when I escape to the choking arm side, is all I want to do is just uh, rotate my hips to the ceiling. If I fall sideways like this, you guys can see that Vivian is still very, very, don't crush me, is still very, very connected to me. Her chest is on my back. Her head is on my shoulder. She's in the perfect position, guys. She's in the perfect position to, to choke me. Right? She's in the per perfect position to choke me. So I don't want that. I want my chest, so I want her chest and my back apart. So she puts a seatbelt on again. So how I like to do that, I get my hand inside, I get my hand inside, and I don't just fall sideways, I open up this foot, and I use that to push sideways. As I push sideways, my inside shoulder is going to get heavy. Now that my shoulder's heavy, I want to turn my hips to seal. And I don't know if you guys can see on my camera or not, but Vivian is no longer on my back. My shoulders are more or less on the uh, mat here. She is not on my back. Good. Now we have three different escapes from here. One is we focus on the outside arm, the choking arm. One, we focus on the inside arm, the control arm. And the last two, we focus on opening up the feet. Okay? So let's focus, let's do this in the same order that we did. So the first thing I want to do here, let's go a little bit closer to the camera. Yeah, it's recording. So again, right here. Good. So the first thing I want to do is I want to start getting my fingers inside her knuckle line. I can't just grab onto her fingers like this, that's illegal. I can't grab one finger, but I can grab four fingers that she's holding. I can't go inside or inside here like this, and I grab on the space between her first and second knuckle here. Now I look to kind of wiggle and make space between her hands. Once her hands are open, I don't want to let her hands just reconnect again, right? So I keep my hands monitoring her hands. Good. She has, she still has her ankles crossed. So the hook, really now, her legs are the only thing that's holding me in place. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this hand over and behind my head. Like so. Now I've cleared her choking arm. She no longer has a choke arm. What I'm going to try to do now is sink my elbow to the mat, scissor my legs, and come up on top. So that's the first escape we did. Let's look at the second one. So the second one, same situation. Her ankles are crossed, her feet are locked. Also, guys, we should mention that here, it's very hard for Vivian to choke. It's not a good angle, right? So I can use my hands pretty freely here. I can't just be an idiot and do nothing, right? But I don't need to be super worried that she's gonna choke. So again, I get to the, the finger, the first knuckle, of the first finger here. And I get inside the other hand and I try my best to open it. Once I open up her hands, I can even make it better by scooching my butt away a little bit. Keep your hands crossed. By scooching my butt away a little bit. That's right. Now, instead of focusing on this hand, we're gonna focus on this hand. And what I need to do, what I need to do is get my elbow to the floor. If her elbow is underneath me, she's doing a good job. That's not gonna be easy. So sometimes what I have to do is I have to use this hand to help me get inside. Right? She, if she knows what she's doing, she's going to be tight here with this elbow. So it's very hard for me to get down. That's right. So stop me, stop me. Yes. She's going to be like this. So it's hard for me to turn in. So sometimes I'll be like this. I'll push down, pass, and then I get my elbow to the floor. Now that my elbow's to the floor, I scissor. Cool. Okay, so the last, the last two is it? It's just two different variations of the same thing. So the last one is one I can't. I just can't open her hands. Her hands are just too tight. She's too strong. She's taking all kinds of steroids, right? <laughs> so from here, it depends on the way that her feet are locked. If the top leg, if the top leg is on top like it is now, wait, no, it's fine. Go back, go back. If the top leg is on top like it is now, this is the easier one. From here, I bring my knee to my chest, and I use my hands to grab on her pinky. Keep your hands crossed. I use my hands inside, and I grab on her pinky toe. Keep your hands crossed. 
From here, even if she tries to keep her ankles crossed, it's very difficult and it's easy for me to open up. Now, the problem here is I've opened up her legs, but I'm still in between her knees, right? You guys can see her two knees are here. I'm still in between her knees, so I'm still in danger. What I want to do is I want to use my foot to come across and collect her foot. Now I pass it to my other foot, so she tries to escape that leg. It's very difficult for her to escape that leg. And it's also very difficult for her to escape this leg. So I have her legs well under control. Now from here, I'm going to scoop my hips out and push my hips in. Now from here, what I don't want is her to come on top, right? If I, if I don't do anything, she's going to come on top. So what I have to do is I use this elbow to push and I use this foot on the floor to push and come across onto the top. Now from here, I suck my elbow out and now I'm on top and I'm ready to escape. All right, I've escaped and I've gotten onto the top. Now the other variation, the other variation is when your foot is crossed the other way, right? Where, yes. Now it's not so easy. I can't just grab the top foot, right? Because the bottom foot is protecting the top foot, right? So what I do now, again, I bring my knee to my chest, which exposes her pinky toe to me, and I unwind her foot. Now this foot, it's a little bit harder to beat. So I might have to use this hand, uh, keep, keep it tight here. Yeah, I might have to use this hand to beat the foot. If I can, I can look to jump across to this side. Right, that's all this And now again, I'm on top. Now the last one that we didn't show, but I still want to show it, is when I turn the turtle instead. So we're here like this, here like this, here like this, here like this. Let's go like this Good. So now I'm here like this. She's underneath me. What I can do also from here is I can look to turn the turtle. If I feel like I can't turn that way, maybe again she's too strong or she's she's flaring this elbow to the ceiling. Yes, you see, she's flaring the elbow to the ceiling. From here, I can look to turn her. Hold on me, hold, 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 hold. Yes, and now I'm in turn her. Now from here, I can look to use my turtle escapes. And again, I'm on the top. So that was a bonus. <laughs> See if you can figure that out before the next time. Yes. Okay.